Today I want to speak about uh, Hosea. Have you ever thought about the story of Hosea? And uh, you ask yourself, why did God tell Hosea to marry a prostitute? Because God told Hosea, hey, go and marry some prostitute. And uh, <laughs> this, is, this is so weird. This, this is unlike God. You know, he tells us, be separate from, you know, uh, the sinners, the fornicators, from, you know, do not uh, be like them. But why was God telling Hosea to go and marry a prostitute? Have you ever asked yourself this question? And this one is found in, uh, in Hosea chapter 1 verse 2. The Bible says, The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of Hudom. Hudom, a prostitute. And the children of Hudoms. Now, it, it's, it, do you go like, whoa? What is God trying to tell here to Hosea? Why, why should he go and take a, a hoe and children of Hodom? For the land has committed great Hodom, departing from the Lord. Hmm. Ever asked yourself this question? Hosea, go and take a hoe. A hoe. Someone when you're, you, you, you're trying to chase. You see this Hosea here, let's, let's presume. Hosea is here trying to... Uh, follow his wife but the wife is still running away with the other man why why did god do this why did god do this you see to begin with it is very important to realize that this command could be understood in uh, two different ways there are two different ways that you, that you can understand this command first and foremost we have to understand that um, this command could be one of anticipation anticipation in other words, God may have instructed, may have instructed Hosea to marry a woman who would later become unfaithful to him. Okay? And uh, the other possibility is that uh, the command was for Hosea to marry someone already who is a prostitute, who is unfaithful at the moment. Alright? Now, in uh, both cases... The, the two options, whether it's someone who will become a prostitute or who is already a prostitute, uh, the reason for this unusual directive by God is specified in the latter half of the same verse. In the latter half of the same verse. Let's see. What does the Bible say here? Alright, look at this. For, for the land has committed great hoodom, departing from the Lord. It's like God was trying to say, this is how I feel. This is how I feel when you try to run away from me. Hosea, do you, do you see how I feel? When, when I try to gather people and bring them to me and try to tell them, listen to me, do what is right. They are running away, they are hoes, they are running after other men, they are running after Satan. And I still come back and pick them up and tell them, please let me wash you, let me clean you up. And I, I, want, I want to love you still. Are you seeing the point here? So, I believe that uh, God wanted to provide an illustration of his relationship with the people of Israel and of course uh, the, the, the Christian fraternity at large who had been so unfaithful who had been so unfaithful by practicing idolatry is this one happening today people they are practicing what is evil you say you're a Christian but you're still trying to do what is wrong and God is pulling you back and you see even in the world, the Holy Spirit is, is pulling us to Christ. But people will not want. He's, he's, he's like telling Hosea, see, do you see the way I feel? Do you see the way I feel? So the theme, the theme of this uh, story of Hosea is uh, basically practicing idolatry. Because anything that you put before your husband, Jesus, or you put before God, is idolatry all right so and this theme is carried through the remainder of the prophecies where we see in chapter 1 and uh, the discussion of unfaithfulness in chapter 2 the unfaithfulness of Israel so let, let's see in the book of Hosea chapter 3 verse 1 all right Hosea chapter 3 verse 1 it tells us something all right about how Gomer the wife the prostitute the wife prostitute of, uh, of Hosea had left him. Look at this. Then said the Lord unto me, 
This is uh, God speaking to Hosea. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman, beloved of a friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, who took to other gods and loved flagons of wine. Think about this. Think about this. So I sought her for me for 15 pieces of silver and for an homer of barley and a half homer of barley and said unto her, Thou shall abide. Thou shall abide for me many days. Thou shall not play the harlot. It's like Hosea is, God is giving us a picture of how he feels with Hosea. It's like God is trying to pay us, to pay the debtors, to, to try and sometimes you're doing evil things and God still picks you up from there and pays your price and picks you home and you run away again and he picks you again and you run away. He was trying to show us through this story of Hosea. And thou shalt not be for another man, so I will also be for you. You see how God is trying to pull us to him. Don't be for another man. Don't go for idol worship. I want to be with you. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an effort and without a teraphim. Afterward, the, the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. You see, God is just saying, I'm paying the price for you now. I want you to come back. I want to love you. I want you to be there. I want you to do what is right because I want you to follow my ways. I love you this much. No matter how much you're trying to run away, I will still hold you in my arms and pull you back. You see the kind of love of God? And he tried to show it so clearly in the story of Hosea. You see, when uh, Gomer, this, uh, the wife of Hosea, all right, when uh, she left Hosea and was living in immorality, the Lord commanded Hosea to find her and buy her back. Buy her back. God was continuing his illustration, except ju just to show you how he wanted to show the greatness of his love. All right? Because just like we have read, the Lord loves the children of Israel. He loves his people. He loves everybody in the world. Yes, of course, that story was about the children of Israel, but it also applies to us. God loves us so much. And, uh, and uh, Hosea's faithful love towards Gomer, that kind of love towards Gomer that he really showed, this love was an illustration of God's faithfulness to wayward Israel and to the church, which is going up and down, doing whatever they want. It's that kind of love that God wants to show us a picture. All right? Just as Gomer had been unfaithful to her husband and had been redeemed several times, bang, babot back, she goes and she gets married to someone else or, or she gets into Udom and Hosea pays and says, no, no, she's still mine. I want her back. That, un that unconditional love, agape love, that's what God is trying to show us. All right? So the prophet Hosea was commanded to marry an unfaithful wife. And uh, this setup gave us a model of Israel's broken relationship with God. And also our kind of broken relationship. When we are supposed to be walking in the spirit, we still want to walk in the flesh. And God is still pulling us back until the day of redemption. Because uh, we have to understand God's people had been chosen and loved by God. Yet they had been unfaithful to him by the way of idolatry. Just as Hosea redeemed his uh, and strangled wife and sought to continue his relationship with her, God promised to redeem Israel and renew their relationship with him. And uh, this story of Hosea and Gomer is an unforgettable picture of God's strong and ending love for his covenant people. Are you a covenant person of God? Have you made a covenant with God? How much do you know? You see, once you get into Christianity, once you become a child of God, yes, you will, you will strang, uh, uh, struggle with so many things, but God is still buying you back. He loves you so much. 
He wants you to see this picture of how much I'm struggling. Think about it. You're told to go and marry someone who is a prostitute. How many times are you going to pick her back? How many times are you going to tell that man who is picking your wife? No, no, let me pay you so that you can give me my wife back. How many times are you going to do this? How many times are you going to bear that pain? That is exactly how God feels. No wonder Jesus was saying, Oh, Jerusalem, how I long to gather you like a, a chicken gathers her chicks. But you're not willing. You're not willing. I want to gather you so much. But you're not willing. I want to bring you back to myself. But you're still fighting me out. Guys, people need to get to God and do what is right. This is a picture, a very clear picture of how God feels whenever we run away from Him. Whenever the chosen people of Him try to go away, that's how God feels. And if you're still there, out there, and you're still not saved, you still don't know what salvation is all about, let me tell you, my friends, there is only one thing which can take you to heaven. Not your good works, not your things, not anything that you've done, not how good you are. But is the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How did he die? Jesus died by shedding his blood. At that cross, he shed all his blood. Why? Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. That blood is the one that we put our faith in. Why blood? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17.11 So if the life is in the blood and we are sinners and the wages of sin is death, then uh, the blood has to be taken out. You have to shed your blood so that the sin can be uh, over. But Jesus said 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us so that you can have his life and he can have your death. If you believe that Jesus shed his blood for you, then my friends... That's all you need to understand to get saved. And after that, just confess what you have believed. You confess and tell Jesus, Jesus, I now understand your unending love. You died for my sins. You were buried and you rose again. As the scripture says, I put all my trust in that blood that you shed. Be my Lord and Savior. I receive that atonement by faith. And once you do that, my friends, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified. The sinner's prayer does not save. What saves you is understanding, believing, then you confess what you've believed. You just don't say some words to be saved. You confess what you've believed. Alright? Have you gotten the point? Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've had a good picture of what really happened with the story of Hosea. She has always baffled my mind until I sat down and read that and I was like, Woo! Things were blowing up. Alright. Hope it has been a blessing. If you enjoyed this video, please... um. You can share to your friends, you can subscribe, you can also uh, check on the description below. We have other channels outside YouTube. Go and check them out and also share to your friends. And if you feel led to support our ministry, please you can. Down there, you can also find places how you can support. God bless you and have a blessed time.